What if the key to solving your staffing challenges isn't about finding candidates with the most experience, but identifying the right people who can grow with your practice? Today, we're going to explore that game-changing idea with someone who's done just that. Welcome back to another episode of the Just Get Hired podcast, where we dive deep into the strategies and insights that can take your career and your business to the next level. I'm your host, Jessica Fiesta George, and today we're tackling one of the most critical challenges in the healthcare industry today, and that is staffing. Whether you're a healthcare professional struggling to find the right team members, or maybe you're just someone who is interested in the innovations transforming in this space, you're in the right place. Because joining me today is Dr. Mike Neal. He's the founder and CEO of Build My Team, a game-changing company that's revolutionized the way healthcare practices recruit and retain top talent. How you doing? I'm doing great, Jess. Thanks so much for having me today. Wonderful. Well, you didn't just stumble upon your success. You have had journeys <laughs> of years of frustration and mistakes when it came to hiring. And you've been leading a system that now serves clients across eight different healthcare professions in over 40 states and in Canada. And so yes. the question is for you, what if the key to building a successful healthcare team isn't about finding experienced candidates, but identifying those who can grow into their practice. Is that something you can help us with? Absolutely. Yeah, Build My Team has created a, a system. It's basically systematized a full method by which we can acquire amazing A players, B plus players for your healthcare practice. And we do so without looking at resumes. Okay, well, I hope we can get into a little bit more about that because all I do is look at resumes every day. Uh, so yeah. I would love to know your secret. Your journey into healthcare staffing is pretty inspiring. Can you share a bit about how you got started into the whole hiring aspect to begin with? Yeah, by all means. So I've been in private practice in Northeastern Pennsylvania since 2001. So I've been at this for a, a hot minute. Years ago, um, back in about 2016, I, I'd basically been in in all kinds of hiring issues. It was awful. We just kept um, the, the revolving door as greased as you could possibly imagine. It would just spin faster and faster. And we kept taking a look at like, why is this happening? Why are other practices able to do this better? Why are other businesses able to do this so much better? Took a look at how Disney did it, Four Seasons did it, Ritz Carlton, some of these amazing high service companies and what methods were they using to do their hiring. So did a really deep dive on that and uh, fast forward to utilizing that in our practice and then automating it. And now we have, we're actually in 10 different healthcare uh, professions um, up from the eight uh, recently. So our, our growth has been terrific. And the reason that's happening is quite simply, um, our clients are able to uh, get the high quality A players, B plus players, um, and get them onto the team um, with about an hour's worth of work, if you can believe that. Okay. Well, what are some of the biggest headaches that you see right now that healthcare professionals are facing when it does come to staffing? Yeah. Oh boy. I don't even know where to start. I mean, the headaches are so big. You need a bottle of uh, Tylenol on your <laughs> desk right in front of you, not within an arm's reach. That's way too far. <laughs> I think that number one, you're getting people who are applying who don't even realize what the job is. And I know that sounds nuts, but they're not reading your job description for a lot of them. Definitely. They are applying. They're uh, not going to show up for interviews. They're just colossal time wasters. It didn't used to be that way. But uh, as anybody who's been hiring for a while knows, but mm -hmm. now that is the, the main method. That's number one. The second thing is docs are used to taking quite a while to hire people. And right off the bat, you need to be decisive. If you are not decisive, you are going to turn those A players and those B plus players away. They're off because they don't want to work for a practice that hums and haws on whether or not they're, uh, they're good at what they do. They know that they're good at what they do. And so they'll just move on to the next opportunity. And I think the next thing is, let's say you're an eye doctor, you're a dentist, you're a chiropractor, whatever. We all mm -hmm. tend to think that the people who are applying for our positions are only applying for eye doctor positions or dental right. positions or chiro <laughs> positions. Uh-uh. It doesn't work that way. We see that across the board, these folks are applying for all kinds of different positions within healthcare. They don't care if you're a dentist, an eye doctor, or otherwise. What they're really looking for is a stable paycheck, an office job, ideally mm -hmm. some nice air conditioning, because they used to be digging holes for a living, or they used to be working at a deli counter, having people throw their ham back at them. I mean, 
these are, are real people who are looking to upgrade their life, their lifestyle into a more stable job and a much more stable paycheck. Well, I can definitely feel your pain about people just applying for jobs because yeah. they, right now, I think it makes it very easy when you can get on Indeed or LinkedIn mm -hmm. and you have the easy apply or the um, fast way to send your resume. So people aren't yeah. really reading through exactly what it is that they're applying for. And then when you call them, they're confused about what role you're talking to them about. And people are not being very strategic when it comes to applying for uh, their, the positions that are available right now. But what are some of the hiring mistakes that you guys feel you made early on? And um, obviously that's shaped how you approach yeah. recruitment today, but what are some of those mistakes that you can share with us? Well, at the time we didn't know they were mistakes because we were just hiring the only way that we knew and that was using resumes. For healthcare positions, unless they're licensed positions, using a resume will lead you nowhere. They they just they don't even have references on them anymore. Mm -hmm. So all a resume is is a description by the person writing it as to how wonderful they are, which is mm -hmm. complete garbage most of the time as we all know when we're looking at these things. So what Bill my team did instead is we flipped it all upside down. And that we learned from those companies that I mentioned earlier. Mm -hmm. We're now not looking for the people who can do the job. Now, follow me on this. We're looking for the people who can't do the job. And mm -hmm. that's uh, where the automation is so wonderful. We take all of the people who apply for these jobs and we put them into what's essentially a great big funnel. And the funnel is a multi-layered assessment process. So the first thing we ask them to do is to do something. That's okay. going to eliminate about 50% of them. As soon as they apply for that job, their cell phone bings with a text and we're asking them to take action. But half of them don't. Now, right off the bat, that half are people that categorically will light your time on fire because right. they have no interest in ever talking with you. But yet you're still going through all those resumes, right? Mm -hmm. Well, build my team. That doesn't happen because of the automated process we designed. And so as they go through this, this funnel, if you will, they... The applicants go through different assessments. And by the time they're done, we actually know within about 97% certainty what their strengths and talents are. And that's the key, Jess. We're only bringing people into your practice when they have the natural strengths and talents for the position that you hired them for. And guess what? When that happens, that's where the magic's made. These people show up for work every day. They do an absolutely terrific job. They have no clue why it's so special that they're mm -hmm. doing that job. But it's quite easy. You're asking them to be themselves, to do what they're great at. And that match of what they're great at and what you need is where the magic happens. So are, you, uh, are there any surprises during this whole screening process that you've uncovered that was like a aha moment for you guys? The first thing that comes to mind, and this is shocking, but we have these exact statistics from my own practice because Bill, my team, does the hiring for, uh, for the, our practice. About 50%, almost exactly 50% of the people who apply mm -hmm. for the job in our practice, let's say there's two jobs open. They apply for job number one. They don't get it. They're terrific candidates. They're a better fit for job number two. And that tells you that it's a coin toss in that particular environment that the people who are applying for these jobs don't actually have a clue what they're great at. They don't understand their own strengths and talents. Because our system will tell us what those are. And so if they're applying for a position in job number one, and they're actually much better at job number two, we'll make the soft suggestion that maybe they would be a better fit. And it's almost unheard of that they would reject that. All they want is a stable job that they're going to be happy with in healthcare. And so we make that suggestion, we move them to the other position and voila, more magic. Awesome. Well, it's clear that finding the right people for your practice is a huge part of your success, but I'm curious how... How do you stay focused and energized with everything that you have going on? I want to just share with you. I've been trying something lately that's really made a really big difference for me. I've started taking this in the beginning of the year and I continue to take it. And it's this shot called Magic Mind. I'm not sure if you've ever heard of it, but every morning, the past couple of days, um, especially, I've been taking it and it's a game changer for me. I used to struggle with staying on track, especially with so many distractions and the pressure to perform at my best. And of course, trying to go through so many resumes, it makes it really difficult to focus. But I've noticed a huge shift in my mental clarity and my focus. And it's 
like my mind is in this zone all day and I get those afternoon crashes sometimes, but this really just replaces my coffee and it gives me something to help me throughout the day. It keeps me sharp. It keeps me stress-free. But have you found anything like that in your routine, especially when you're managing your practice and everything else? For me, it's more physical. I'm, I started running uh, March 2022. Okay. Prior to that, I was only running when chased. And uh, <laughs> now I do this voluntarily and I absolutely love it. It's been terrific. Okay. Why well, I noticed in your bio that you are aspiring to be an ultra runner. Uh, do you have any races coming up? I do a 12 hour race where I'm going to run until I can't run anymore. And then oh I'll walk God. and then I'll walk until I can't walk anymore. I hope there's no crawling involved because that'd be I rough. hope not either. Well, I need yeah. to follow up with you. Um, and maybe if you try the magic mind, um, that can help you keep going. But for anyone who's listening, if you're curious about trying magic mind for yourself, I have a special offer for you. You can get up to 48% off your first subscription and 20% off a one-time purchase. If you use the code GH. G20, that's just get hired 20 uh, at the checkout. So we'll have that in the show notes, but you can head over to magicmind.com backslash JGH and see if it works for you. And maybe Dr. Neil, we can add that to your routine. But getting back to the healthcare staffing, now mm -hmm. the role of algorithms and analytics, everyone wants to know, okay, you've got this great system. What are the numbers? Those are big buzzwords right now especially yeah. when people want to know the results. So how do they play into your hiring process and do they make a difference? The difference that I experience with our practice quite simply sounds too good to be true. And I was on a podcast quite a while ago where the host um, got a lot of feedback from his listeners that said, there's no way this is accurate. So I had an offline conversation with him and showed him tax returns. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Money we talk. went... For, in our practice, we went from uh, 14 full-time equivalents, you know, FTEs, down to 10. Our gross revenue went up 50% during that period, and our net income almost tripled. And you say, well, how the heck is that possible? It's, I'd, first of all, I would not have believed this if somebody came to me with this early on. It's possible because an A player doesn't do one and a half times the amount of work. They don't do twice the amount of work they do a multiple of the amount of work that a C or D player will. Mm -hmm. You don't have to manage them. You're not spoon feeding these folks. You don't have to ride them to do what's necessary. You give them the goal. They're going to get to the goal. They're going to get there almost certainly in a different way than you ever thought possible. So in our practice, what we do, the metaphor is this, we've got a bus. My mm -hmm. job is to provide a map for the bus. It's to tell the driver, Mm -hmm. that we need to go to this place. I'm not going to tell them how fast to drive the bus. I'm not going to do anything other than put guardrails on the road. The team is responsible for getting the right people on the bus. Sounds hard. With Build My Team, it's not. The next step is you get them on the right seats on the bus. That's critical, and it's almost always missed. Once they're in those positions, like I talked about earlier, mm -hmm. they are incredibly productive, and now the bus can drive itself. The people on the bus drive itself. This is how our practice runs. To give you an example, I had to look for the keys to our office the other day. I realized I had not opened or locked the door to my own practice in over a year and a half. <laughs> I was sweating bullets. I couldn't find the keys. Mm -hmm. Now, why would I say such a ridiculous thing? It's because the team's responsible. I trust them. They mm -hmm. are absolutely fantastic, and I can't brag about them enough. That's a story that I could not have imagined myself telling several years ago when I was essentially a doc, golden handcuffed to the practice, all kinds of leases, loans, <laughs> you name it, where my name was on. I couldn't go anywhere. Didn't like going to work, trying to smile. Now the a day is fun. We've got a bunch of great people. Um, we've got folks who like to uh, sneak up behind somebody and scare them as they're walking down the hallway. I mean, we're laughing throughout the day. It's a completely different experience. And that's something that I have to tell your listeners, it will change your life in ways that are hard to predict because of how amazing it is. Well, it sounds like you got a great team, obviously. And um, I do. You've got the great 
formula to bringing people on board, but what is the key to making them stay? Like what, how is, what is your retention process? And have you been able to kind of figure that out? I would imagine working for you, it's probably a fun place to be. So of course, why would anybody want to leave? But, you know, for other practices, you know, drama is everywhere. Uh, The job might not be what they thought it was going to be whenever they started. And so what do you think would be a good tip or advice for people when it comes to retention? Well, I think number one, if you want to retain your great people, you let the the people go that are not working in the right roles. So B, C, D, your D's got to go. It doesn't make them bad people, but you have to let them go, whether it be a gentle nudge or a little bit stronger than a gentle nudge. A D player will repel all talent from your practice. It's like a rain jacket. You're going to repel the water. And you want that, that water, the, the C players are next. When you do that, what you're going to notice is that an A player will only want, they only want to work with A players. They will tolerate B players, but if you're asking them to work with a C player, they're gone. They're out the door. They know Mm -hmm. that they can get a job elsewhere. There's no, there's no confidence issues from them. They know their worth because they love performing. They love executing. And, you know, you you mentioned our practice. Our practice is a pretty darn good place to work. It's still work. Okay. Like we we're a high volume eye care practice. We take great care of people. It's the same that so many of your listeners, you know, are are saying to themselves right now, but it's still work. And so if you want to retain these people, Mm -hmm. you bring in performers. That's job number one. When you do that, you're going to notice an immediate culture change. And Jess, I am here to tell you that if you are afraid to let those people go, what you're going to notice after you finally get up the gumption to pull the trigger is mm-hmm. that the, the great team members take a big sigh of relief and they thank you for it because they've been carrying those people eight to 10 hours a day, every business day of the week for as long as they can remember. That's the only reason why those folks weren't canned before. Okay. Well, besides getting rid of the D players, if there's current healthcare professionals out right now that are struggling to recruit, what is one thing that they can do right now to turn things around? Well, uh, other than the uh, incredibly self-serving answer of calling build my team, what you can do basically is you have to change your mindset from the hire for experience okay. to hire for strengths and talents. Now, experience, again, for the licensed positions is a requirement. There's nothing anybody can do about that. But for every other position in your practice, when you're bringing in experience, you are bringing in a couple of good habits. But in my history, it's mostly bad habits. Those folks are leaving their position for a reason. And what the Build My Team process has shown is one of the things we measure is their speed of learning for these candidates. So statistically, it's a vastly easier job to bring in somebody who learns fast, who has these strengths and talents and can very quickly pick up what's required of the position. Now you say, oh, I don't want to train. I don't want to do all that stuff. Your team will do all that. You don't have to be involved for the most part. The other side of that is I'm bringing in somebody with experience. Well, guess what? How, please tell me, Jess, how do I untrain bad habits? How do I get rid of these? Well, you know what? I was at Dr. Jones's office for a million years. And we did it this way. You can't get rid of that stuff. Yeah, Just start yeah. from the blank slate. And you're, you know, that's the mindset shift. When you do that, you will get team members that you're not only training in a new career, you're helping them up. You are bringing in people who think this is the best thing ever. You gave them a chance. You know, mm-hmm. I could go on and on versus somebody who says, well, there's another doc down the road who's hiring for a quarter an hour more. I'm thinking about it. You see what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Well, okay. Smaller practices often have a tough time because they're competing against these big healthcare organizations. Any tips for some of those other than calling your company um, yeah. that they can still attract and keep the top talent? Well, you, you're definitely looking for people who want to make a contribution. And there's a lot of people who work in healthcare who are on the uh, younger side of things. They almost universally want to make a contribution. They enjoy helping people. And so I think that right off the bat in a smaller practice, you're going to have a much larger impact on an average patient's life than you will in, let's say, a hospital system or one of the larger organizations. You're just more removed from that. Okay. So that's something that that you can ask about and try and determine. 
Okay. Well, where do you see healthcare staffing going in the next few years and what should practices be ready for? Well, as I said earlier, um, you know, where, well, where's it going? It's getting harder and harder. Uh, I mean, even, even the statistics that we see, uh, the, the entry level positions, COVID showed folks that a lot of people don't actually have to work, which mm-hmm. is, you know, for any, uh, any owner of a practice is, is moderately upsetting, mm-hmm. but there's a lot of folks who don't think they have to work. The good news is that the people who are working either have to or want to, or a combination of both. So the labor pool has been functionally decimated and it's worth in some professions like dentistry versus others, but um, that's something that has changed. And I don't know that that's going to improve. Unemployment is, is ridiculous at this point on the low side, people aren't clamoring to get positions. And so that's challenging. And that's why if you're looking for experience, you're going to have an absolutely awful time trying to get those because you've taken the entire labor pool that's that could possibly apply for your job and mm-hmm. you've cut it by a huge percentage. So our approach with Build My Team, of course, is to take that entire labor pool and throw them into the top of the funnel and see who at the very end would be a terrific fit for your practice. I think one of the other big challenges that any company, doesn't matter what industry, but healthcare in particular um, comes to mind is the need for remote work. And obviously Mm -hmm. things that we need you can't do remotely. You can't have, you know, an eye exam yet. We haven't introduced technology or AI to be able to do some of those things, but we do need people in the office. And that's been a challenge Mm -hmm. um, in a lot of the industries that I support. And I could imagine in your uh, area as well, that people are looking for more remote work. And so therefore people are not applying for jobs or they're not taking your calls. Are you seeing that as well as one of the challenges is the need to work remotely? Well, I think that there's a lot of people who dream of a remote work job. And there's a lot of people who are like, get me out of the house. So what the solution to this is to raise the level at which we're all operating. And what I mean by that is we're down in the weeds. Why aren't we getting Mm -hmm. more applicants? Why don't these people want to work? Well, uh uh-uh. No, get on your little uh, hot air balloon and go up, up, up. We got to take a look and say that the fundamental problem isn't what we just talked about. It's that we're not getting enough applicants. And if you if you need to find, like with Build My Team, we're 97% certain statistically that we, we put a person in the job they're going to work out. That's why it's guaranteed. Okay. Well, how do we get to that point? By putting a lot of applicants into the top of the funnel. We're not looking for a needle in a haystack. We're looking for a needle in a stack of needles. Mm, Completely different approach. So I would say that the remote work component comes down more to not having enough applicants because there are always people who want to show up in person and help other people. And of course, there there are folks who would rather sit behind the scenes and sit on a laptop all day long in their PJs. So be it. That's fine. But healthcare only has a couple positions where you can do remote work. Mm -hmm. The rest of it is all in person and they are not robots or not. um, The, the bulk of healthcare will continue to be provided in person. So let's say you don't believe me on that. I'd like Mm -hmm. you to send me to a website where I can get dentistry done on my mouth while I'm sitting in my computer or, well, I can get an eye exam while sitting, sitting in my computer. There are companies that do things along those lines but you're, you're not talking about anywhere close to the quality of healthcare. And what I've seen in my career is that people who, uh, like people actually deeply appreciate high quality healthcare. And all it takes is one healthcare scare and boy, your opinion changes right away. So I don't see that as going away. I just see that as some components of it. Let's say remote billing. Yes, you can remote bill. You can have a remote secretary. You'll do it for a while. And then you'll be like, oh my God, we got to get a person back at our front desk. You know what I mean? That type of thing. Let's learn a little bit more about your company and how people can get in touch with you if we need to learn more. Sure. Build My Team, um, again, focuses entirely on the non-licensed positions for healthcare. Front desk, billing, practice manager, you name it. Any of the positions. And we're in 10 different healthcare positions. uh, fields right now. Um, it basically works for any private practice is what we've been able to demonstrate. And so a person can 
um, bring on a new team member with less than an hour's worth of work end to end. And there's a whole bunch of stuff I haven't talked about, obviously, but there's some secret sauce, some really cool things. And it really does make your practice vastly more competitive. So uh, all you have to do is give us a call or go to buildmyteam.com and uh, schedule a free consultation. One of our team members will hop on with you at a time that's great and uh, simply learn all about your practice and see if we can help you. Okay. Well, we'll put all of the links in the show notes and then I'll have it on my website so that people can find you. But I appreciate your insightful conversation and sharing your Thank journey you, and expertise. I'm sure yeah. the listeners uh, who listen to this episode will walk away with a lot of valuable tips. And I hope that it will help them improve their hiring practices, especially if you're in the healthcare industry. But um, before we wrap up, I do want to give a, another quick shout out to Magic Mind. As I mentioned earlier, it's a, been a fantastic addition to my daily routine. It keeps me focused and energized throughout the day. And if you want your boost for your mental performance and to reduce your stress, I highly recommend it. And Dr. Neil, I hope you also give it a try too. It is non-prescription, so you anybody can go buy it. They mm -hmm. do have it at various stores like Sprouts, um, and you can also order it online. Uh, head over to magicmind.com slash JGH to claim your offer. And to all of our listeners, if you enjoyed this episode, make sure to follow, subscribe, leave a comment. We would love to hear your thoughts. If you have other questions for Dr. Neil, I'd be happy to give them over to him. So leave us some comments. Let us know what other questions you might have. It really helps people if you can also share this content and you can head over to my website, justgethired.com for more. Thank you, Dr. Neil, for your time. I know it's uh, been a very busy time for everyone, especially trying to find the right talent. And I hope everyone enjoys their day. Until next time, we'll see you. And this is another episode of the Just Get Hired podcast.